this portion of a child's car seat requires an edge trimming operation as well as various cutout operations through the centre. Firstly we can create the toolpaths required. Here we have a profile toolpath and then we can choose the robot that we wish to use. I have a static table with tool change facility cell from the Delcam library. That done we can go to the robot control page and decide how we would like the robot to move around the component. The default is a free mode so the robot is free to choose the posture but I have already defined some orientation vectors to help control the wrist of the robot so I'm going to use those around this part. That done we can rewind to the start of the operation and quickly simulate, simulate a round and save that you can see that we have four ticks so this is uh, ready to go to the robot. Okay that done we can look at the holes in the center and for this operation I have a toolpath that goes through those holes and I'd like to first of all simulate them so let's go to the start position and as before play that operation and we can see that the x-axis or the wrist is staying parallel um, to the, the base of the robot here and is not moving. I can save that but it may be that for parts of this operation for example this hole here I might wish to change the posture of the robot so it does not overhang quite so much the edge of the component. And so to achieve that I can go to the rotate option and let's nudge around to an angle that I would prefer something like this. Having got that angle, I can go to the Tools page and go for the Orientation Vector Editing form. From here, I can load in, using a full segment, this being the, the full segment, the current position, and apply that to that segment. If we were to draw the orientation vectors, you would see that they have now changed to represent the posture of the robot that we have. Likewise, I could do the same for segment or portion of toolpath at the back of the screen. So let's do exactly the same. Let's nudge this posture around. Maybe something like this. Load that posture in. Select that segment and apply it. Okay, so that done, we can now rewind to the start of our operation and simulate. And we can see that for each of these segments, the posture of the robot is changed. Again, we can save that for future use. So now that brings me on to the subject of the tool change. If the robot we are using does not have a standard subroutine for changing the tool, we can use Paramal Robot to define a tool change sequence. To achieve that, I'm going to load up the virtual teach pendant. And having got that, I'm going to create a new uh, motion. So the first thing I'll do is add in the current position and then using the robot control page I'm going to rotate the robot around to an orientation that I would like. Something like so. And again add that in as a position. From here I would like to maybe rotate down axis 2 and also rotate up axes 5. Okay, so having done that, let's look from above. And let's 
move the robot to the desired position. So this time I'm going to change the motion type from a joint move to a linear move and I'm going to use the nudge tools not in the tool orientation but in the base of the robot coordinate system so it stays square to the tool rack. And I'm going to nudge such that the tool is in the correct position for the tool change. So let's suggest that that is the first position that we require. Let's add that in. I can then move on down to the tool change position and add that in. And then I can go back to the safe position, add that in again, and then as a joint move, go to the pre-positioning of the robot and from here back to the home position. And let's save that as the tool change operation. Good. Okay, so now we've got that saved, we can go to the robot cell and go for the configuration page for the simulation and ask to add in an intermediate torque change which is called TC here and you can see that all of those moves have been added in for me. We can add in the commands to pick a tool at the start and drop it at the end as well and save that. So from here on when we create an NC program which I will do now and add in our operation so firstly the profiling operation followed by the holes operation. When we simulate this operation, we see that the first thing that happens is that the tool is loaded, a profiling pass is performed, and then once that's finished, the next operation is performed, it has the same tool, and finally is returned to the carousel.